Warning. This video discusses the topic of breast cancer and will contain images and language that may be inappropriate for some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Instead of wrapping a pink ribbon around some arbitrary product, disabled Army veteran and multimedia artist Mark Maynard created a stunning example of feminine power. I'm author Gwen Elise Clayton, and I am a breast cancer survivor. I loved the color pink when I was a little girl, but now that I'm a full-grown adult, it's not really my thing. Maybe a dusty pink or dark cherry would work, but this Pepto-Bismol color reminds me of all of the GERD medications I took when I was going through chemotherapy. And I really do hate the corporate pink washing where companies use Breast Cancer Awareness Month, AKA Pinktober, to create these marketing campaigns and sell products. They make millions of dollars and they might donate some of it back to breast cancer research or treatment or some sort of charity that benefits breast cancer patients. But oftentimes it just lines the pockets of the seller and it really is disgusting. And whenever you see all those Venus figurines from antiquity or the goddess statues in metaphysical bookstores, they all have two over-exaggerated breasts. But one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. It would be nice to have a symbol that looks like us. And sometimes that means being flat-chested on one side or both. Now, before I go any further, I want to point out that I am just starting to learn the proper language to be more inclusive of all breast cancer victims. Now, when I say one in eight women are going to get breast cancer, I do know that trans women can get breast cancer if they are using hormone therapy. When I was going through breast cancer treatment, I had a friend who was also transitioning male to female and we were going through our experiences at the same time. And I asked my oncologist, is there anything that I need to tell her about, you know, now she has breasts after 30 years. And my oncologist told me that if there, if she's taking hormone therapy, then yes, she should definitely get mammograms every year. And of course, now we're talking more about non-binary people. Well, they get breast cancer too. And trans men can get chest cancer. And even cis men can get breast cancer. And trans women who don't go through hormone therapy can get breast cancer or chest cancer or whatever you want to call it. The point is, this is a terrible, aggressive, nasty disease that needs to be treated and we all need to take care of each other. In the meantime, for the purpose of this story, I am a cis woman and this story is going to reflect my experiences. Moving on, I chose to put off reconstructive surgery because, well, at the time I was 48 years old, I'm overweight, and I really just didn't see the point in having two droopy breasts. But I did not get completely flat closure because in the event I ever did lose weight and start working out, which is always my goal every single day when I wake up and it just never seems to happen. But anyway, I did leave a little bit of a shelf when I got my mastectomy, just in case I changed my mind in the future. So the problem with reconstructive surgery is, well, it's surgery and there's always risks with any surgery. It's trauma to the body. At the time, it wasn't worth the risks. But like I said, I did leave a little bit of a shelf because if they're gonna do reconstructive surgery, they do need to have a little bit of something to work with. So I left that intact. In the meantime, here it is four years later, and 
I'm still kind of lopsided, as you can tell. So that's been four years of looking at goddess images with two breasts, and I only have one. Earlier this past spring, my friend Mark made a post on Facebook about how he was doing these, these clay figurines. He's normally a, a, a painter and a, he, you can call them drawers, what do you call them? The pen and ink artist. So normally he does that kind of stuff, but he was venturing into clay and I didn't really give too much thought about it until in the summer, late, later on in the summer, and I was looking for um, garden statuary. He said he could make me something, and I didn't really pay any attention to it until a friend of mine posted on my Facebook timeline that she had come across an image of a crystal sculpture of a Venus figurine with only one breast. And I thought, oh, this is so cool. So I went to click on the link to buy it and the shop isn't in business anymore. So I asked Mark, hey, can you make me something like this? Of course he said, sure. And he got to it straight away. He started working on a sketch and a painting along with the sculpture itself. As part of the process, he reflected on his relationships with other women in his family. He named the image Grateful. My name is Mark A. Maynard. I'm 56 years old. I'm from Ashland, Kentucky. Tell me about your background in art. How long have you been doing art? Ever since I can hold a pencil. I'm learning new stuff, though, like the sculpting. That's all pretty new for me, except, you know, messing around with a you know, gummy eraser doing silly sculpts and stuff out of Play-Doh, but uh, the paint, uh, the pencil, the pen, all my life. So tell me about Grateful. I put a spin on the statue of Bridget, the uh, Irish Celtic uh, goddess of everything, fertility, uh, similar to the Greek Gaia. And uh, I took a traditional form of her and I put the anguish that I've seen personally from family members and friends who had and died with breast cancer. Take a deep breath. And, uh, you know, so I put that, I incorporated all that into this. And I worked at it, worked at it, worked at it until I was happy with it. And I left left the statue hairless and and faceless for several reasons. Hairless because look what this shit does to you. Look at the, uh, that nasty crap they put in you. You know, even though it's keeping you alive, it's actually destroying cells too. Your hair falls out. Your liver turns jaundice. You get, you're sick. It's not just the breast cancer; it's the chemicals. And then I left her faceless because breast cancer is, isn't is isn't prejudice. Nobody's safe, not even dudes. And so I, I, she's, an, she's not anonymous, she's everybody. But she's un unknown to one individual. And that's what makes her beautiful. And that's the reason why I, I wanted her to have that Burnish finish, that copperish finish, goes it makes her glow, and that's her inner beauty and her inner light, and it's, it's a great big fuck you, straight up, it's fuck you. I'm gonna live, I'm gonna prosper, I'm gonna be happy. I am grateful. What is she made out of? She is white base clay. If you look at the white cliffs of Dover, that's the same shit. It's uh, chalk base clay. It's usually. Deep, I can get into the science of it, but God, I'll say, save you that rant and boredom. And, um, but it's, it's strange clay, you know, it's base clay because it's set up many foundations, the whole country of England. And, um, so I did that and a few little odds and ends that, uh, similar to, concrete because make its own heat 
because I have to uh, custom rig a kiln because my landlord, Rick Wire, <laughs> bless his heart, I love him to death, won't let me build a kiln. Bless his heart. We're in Kentucky, so bless your heart. It's kind of a, and, uh, a different meaning out here. <laughs> yes, it does. I feel honored that Miss Gwen allowed me to do this sculpture. It's, it was overwhelming into the fact that it, a flood of memories, good and bad, um, the people that, that I know has had this dreaded, oh my God, it's life wrecking, family wrecking. It's, it's, it's a ball, wrecking ball. It's, it's awful. I guess it depends on your perspective on how you deal with it. I don't know if I could or not. And, I, and all these women who have dealt with it and marching on the survivors, you're all fucking warriors. And I love every one of you all. I do. After he finished with the sculpture, he asked me not to put it in the garden after all because he didn't want it exposed to the elements. So here she is sitting on a proper throne and surrounded by other little witchy offerings. He also let me take home the painting and the sketch. I took the sketch to my friend Mary Johnson at Aladdin's Art Gallery and Framing in downtown Ashland. And you are Mary Johnson with I Aladdin's am. Framing. I am. So go ahead and tell me what you're okay. doing with this. I really like the uneven edges of this, so I think we should show those instead of covering it up like that. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to use this interesting kind of dark pink color to mount the artwork mm -hmm. on, and then we're going to use a black matte um, around it. I'm going to use a spacer to give it a little three-dimensionality and use this frame. It's a cool looking frame and it's kind of a coppery. It's dark, dark but it's got some, I don't know what kind of color that is, but I think it plays off the dark pink nicely. Mm -hmm. We debated about using the copper color, but I really, I think I like the texture in this. Dark. I like the texture. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to go with the texture. Okay, good. All right. Mark is an amazing artist. Check out some of his other work. This right here is another way to uh, Bridget personified, which is the same uh, goddess that I that was emulated for, you know, grateful. Except she's down soaking up, you know, the uh, mother Earth's rays and energy. They're grateful she's releasing it. This was supposed to be at NASA. Oh, this is the NASA painting. Yes. All right, tell me tell me the story behind this. This painting, I got some friends that live in uh, Lakeland, Florida, and NASA was having an exhibit at the airport, Tampa Airport. And I, and I did this, this is about as close to pop art as I could get. And Inside this painting, which has like 27 hidden objects, all sci-fi related, except for one, and that's Tommy Chong. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, either a spirituality-based, sci-fi, Tommy Chong, and a Pink Floyd reference, but you got to really be a fan to see that one. You just looked at it. The yeah. meteor? No, right there, though. The mouth when I got to the well, on, on the wall. Oh, no, I, I know. I, I'm not that. I, I know the, the the prism from Dark Side of the Moon. Okay, but with, with the meat grinder. When they go through the meat grinder, they go in space, and there's a mouth open, and, that's, and there's the uvula. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know, Sister Moon. But I'm not going to give all of it away. But I, I'm looking at Tommy Chong right now. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan. <laughs> Tommy. I have to hide in people. Mm -hmm. and, these, and these pansies actually exist. Mm -hmm. They're in the phantom purples. Yeah. To me, a beautiful flyer, but that's between me and my mother. <laughs> <laughs> this is the German version of Snow White's stepmother. Yes. The, uh, the evil queen, when she left the village to go deliver the apple, 
she burnt the village down behind her. So just in case there was no witnesses, the you know the simple fact is our fairy tales as of today are so watered down and so sugar coated. It would blow your minds to know exactly what they really mean and what they really say. This statue means so much to me. It's meaningful, it's personal, and it's absolutely gorgeous. I can't thank Mark Maynard enough for doing this for me. If you want a pink appliance, go for it. I don't care. But if you want to do something meaningful and personal for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, then do something meaningful and personal. Don't just don't just buy something pink. And if you want to support a breast cancer survivor, you are welcome to buy my books, Fermata Sellers and Zinfandel's Grimoire. They're both available on Amazon. Uh, they are both about a haunted winery. So if you like paranormal fiction, these may be good options for you, especially in October during the spooky season. I am also available for freelance professional business writing. If you'd like, just send me a message through LinkedIn. I would be happy to be an extension of your marketing department. On that note, I'm going to sign off for now. You've been watching the Rivervine YouTube channel. I am your host, Gwen Elise Clayton. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday evening.